Hi Mariners, this is Mohan Das Ji. I am the originator of uh, Mariners Digest YouTube. I have been sailing in uh, Indian naval ships for about seven years in communication department. Then for uh, 20 years I have been sailing in merchant ships as a radio officer. I have been teaching now for more than 22 years. Out of that, 2007 to 2009, I was in Amit University, Chennai, as a, an assistant professor. I was teaching the Merck's line B.Tech dual candidates. One semester, all the 10 bridge equipments I was teaching. Another semester, GMDSs. So I stayed with them for two years. Uh, many of those uh, students have become masters, chief engineers now. 2009, I got an offer from Indian Maritime University, Chennai campus to start the GMDSS course and conduct the course. So I left Ahmed University and joined Indian Maritime University in 2009, started the course, conducted the course for seven years. The course was for every month. During that period I was teaching B.Sc. Nautical Science same bridge naval equipments, navigational equipments and uh, GMDSs all the seven years. Also these modular courses, PSSR, PST, uh, all that. Uh, 2016 I left IME Chennai. I published a book for B.S. in Nautical Science, GMDSS syllabus. The e-book is available in Amazon. The price is 140 rupees and the hot copy is with me and that is 500 rupees. I have started this YouTube in 2019 during COVID time and uh, so far I have uploaded about 82 videos. Out of that, basically 20 videos of the practical GMDSS equipments. Because regular college, once it is closed evening at 5 o'clock, that equipments you don't get access. So with my voice, I explained all the operation of the GMDSS equipments. That is about 20 videos. All other videos are safety related. PSSR, PST, EFA, uh, that ILO, accident prevention, gas tankers. So I have been uploading as and when I get time. There are 82 videos and globally there are 81,000 views. Now I have decided uh, to collect all the question answers from various sources for uh, the DG exit exam. Uh, question answers and I started with that. After this uh, video, I am going to play the PSCRB exit exam questions related to uh, emergency radio equipment uh, to be carried in the survival craft and the emergency communication also. So all of you should know, you must have studied in the class of PSCRB course, PST course. We carry three emergency radio equipment. EPIRB, emergency position indicating radio beacon. SART, search and rescue radar transponder. And portable VHF, which is also called as GMDSS walkie talkie. So, EPIRB requirement is one number, 
SART requirement is two numbers and portable VHF three numbers. I will briefly explain about all the three equipments before I go to the questions. Emergency position indicating radio beacon. Once it is brought on board the survival craft, life boat or life raft, there is an lanyard attached to that. One end of the lanyard is attached to the equipment, other end you tie it with the survival craft, take out the safety pin, it is a spring loaded switch, it will go to on, put it in the water. That is the very first sequence you will have to do after going safely away from the ship. Okay, because it will start giving <coughs> your position continuously to the Maritime Rescue Coordination Center. They are none other than Coast Guards. Most of the country, the Coast Guards are Maritime Rescue Coordination Centers. Okay, so EPER will give continuously your position. Now, there are a number of questions I am going to show you in the slide mode. Basically, how the EPER operation that I will tell you. It is a satellite equipment. From the EPER, only the vessel ID, identification is transmitted. It is received by two satellites. They are known as COSPOS and SARSAT. They are in low earth orbit, LEO low earth orbit. These satellites after receiving this EPIRB signal will pass it on to a ground station called local user terminal LUT. In India we have uh, two LUTs, one at Bangalore, another one at Lucknow. So throughout the world there are so many LUTs. LUT after receiving this EPIRB signal, he is going to calculate the position of EPIRB by using Doppler shift method. Doppler shift, remember this. Doppler is the name of the scientist and Doppler shift method, it will find out the position of EPIRB. So now he has two information, the idea of EPIRB and the position of EPIRB. These two information it will pass it on to another land station called MCC, Mission Control Center. In India, only one MCC is there that is in Bangalore. They are these ISRO people. But throughout the world, there are many MCCs. They are all connected on landline always. Right. And MCC are the registration authority for EPIRB. If you are a ship owner in India, all the Indian register vessel, if you wanted to place an EPIRB in your ship, you will have to first download the application form from MCC India and fill up all the details about the ship. Then you hand it over, forward it to MCC Bangalore they will supply you the ID that you put it inside your EPIRB then only you can place it on board your ship. So that is the procedure that is just for your information. Okay, From LUT the ship's ID and the position had come to the MCC. MCC will put this data in their system. They will fire, take out all the information about the ship. They will inform the ship owner also. Immediately they will inform the nearest uh, MRCC. So MRCC, I told you, they are none other than Coast Guard. They are the people responsible for search and rescue. They have very fast uh, Coast Guard ships, uh, Coast Guard helicopter, Coast Guard wing planes, everything there and their primary duty is safety of life at sea. Even then, if the MRCC is very far away from EPIRB, they can find out the nearby ships 
to the distress vessel by using AIS automatic identification system and LRIT long range identification and tracking so with these two equipment they can find out if any other ships are nearby they will advise them to go for rescue and coast guard also will go that is how the search and rescue is taking place so what you need to know is with relevant to dg shipping exit exam eper one number is carried the full form is emergency position indicating radio beacon okay that identification only it is transmitting it is received by cosmos sir sat satellites they are known as leo sar low earth orbiting satellites for sar okay so that information you should know and local user terminal lut calculate the position using doppler shift method okay now other things like related to the battery self life and working how many hours uh, all that is coming in the question okay now i'll go uh, to the uh, slides we'll see all the questions the psrb set number 111 only for these three equipments and emergency communication some questions like distress signal urgency signal safety signal that comprises about 32 questions then i will come up with other questions in set number 2 and 3 so that if you read about 100 120 questions 100% you can score in psrb exit exam let me go to the slides now so this is my youtube channel mariners digest psrb exit exam questions and answers set number 1 all the emergency radios and communication questions question number 1 what does this imo symbol mean the answer is epub you can make a note it's only a transmitter epub question number 2 what action should the gmds operator take in a distress situation when embarking a survival craft the answer switch on epub and sort immediately and leave them on question number 3 epub works on which satellite answer is cosmos sarsat they are two satellites cosmos belonging to russia sarsat belonging to usa question number 4 which eper transmits a distress alert that is received and relayed by an inmars sat satellite the answer is l band epub inmarsat is geostationary satellites okay so there used to be l band epubs but that is not mandatory this 406 megahertz epubs are mandatory that one what we carry question number 5 DHF EPERB is designed to use in which area they mean the sea area answer is area A1 remember it is area A1 only you may find in the choice A1 and A2 they are all wrong answers the correct answer is area A1 question number 6 lithium battery used in epub works for answer is 48 hours 
48 hours. Question number 7. Self life of EPUB battery is answer 3 to 5 years. Sometimes you may find a choice the maximum given only 4 years that also you tick mark or only 5 years that also ok or 3 to 5 years. Do not uh, tick mark anything other than up to 5 years, 6 years, 7 years, 8 years, 10 years and all wrong answer. 3 to 5 is the correct answer, 5 years also correct answer, 4 years if 3 to 5, 5 is not there, 3, 4 years also correct, but it is actually 5 years. Question number 8. Leo SAR stands for answer is low earth orbiting satellite for SAR. SAR means search and rescue low earth orbit. In the atmosphere we have three orbiting for uh, uh, these uh, satellites. Low earth orbit is used for Cosmos or SAT satellites for EPUB. Medium earth orbit is used for GPS and geostationary in more sad for communication purposes. Okay, so here LEOSAR stands for low earth orbit satellites for SAR. That is the answer. Question number nine: How many EPR are carried on board a ship as per SOLAS regulation? answer is 1. Remember the frequency of this EPUB is 406 megahertz. You can note down 406 megahertz. Question number 10. Each EPUB shall be tested using the integrated test circuit and output indicator every answer is month, every month. In this paper, we will find uh, that is the three position on off switch off, test, and on. So, in the test position, you when we put you can test the EPUB that is done every month. <coughs> Question number 11 Which position is shown by EPUB? The answer is real time position. Question number 12, EPIRB stands for, answer is emergency position indicating radio beacon, emergency position indicating radio beacon. Question number 13, your master ensures that EPIRB dash answer is tested monthly. Question number 14. What is the use of 121.5 megahertz in EPUB? SAR aircraft uses this frequency for homing purpose. For your information, 1 to 1.5 megahertz used to be there in EPIRB along with 406 mega cycle. <coughs> but now these days you may not find 1 to 1.5 but even then this question is asked. Homing means HAR aircraft uh, taking the bearing of EPIRB and changing their course and coming towards cheaper that is called homing. This 1 to 1.5 mega cycle is the SAR aircraft emergency frequency. Question number 15. What does this IMO symbol mean? Answer is short. Here you can see two arrows. It is that 
transmitter and the receiver. Question number 16. What would most likely prevent a short signal from being detected? Answer is the rescue personnel were monitoring the 10 centimeter radar. On board the international ships above 500 GT, 9 gigahertz 3 centimeter X band radar is compulsory. They use uh, two radars, one is X-band which is compulsory, other one for uh, their convenience S-band 10 cm. If the SAR signal is not uh, received on board that ship, the navigating officers were probably monitoring the wrong radar, 10 cm S-band radar. So the SAR frequency is 9 GHz, 3 cm X-band. If they change the, see the look at the X-band radar, they can find the SAR signal if they are in range. Question number 17. How can the SART's audible tone monitor be used? It informs surveyors that assistant may be nearby. So once the radar signal is received by SART, it will start uh, giving audible alarm and also a uh, light flickering. So that means your SART signal is received by some ship or aircraft radar. So you can expect some assistance. That is why the answer is it informs survivors that assistance may be nearby. Question number 18. How can your SART range be increased? The answer it should be held as high high as possible. Normally the sort recommended height is 1 meter above water level that is why sort is always coming with 1 meter telescopic pole attached. In the lifeboat you erect it with 1 meter pole. In the life raft inside the canopy you can find many hooks. You can hang it also that is about 1 meter from water level. But this 9 gigahertz frequency if you increase the height the distance covered will be increased that is called range so for increasing the range you can increase the height of the sort question number 19 sort is the search and rescue radar transponder how is this device activated answer is it is carried into the survival craft and switched on by the occupants. Question number 20. How long SORT operates in standby mode? Answer is 96 hours. This question is very often coming. Question number 21. What SORT stands for? Answer is Search and Rescue Radar Transponder. Search and Rescue Radar Transponder. So remember the radar word is important. There may be another choice Search and Rescue Transponder. That is wrong answer. Search and Rescue Radar Transponder. SORT will respond only to radar signals. Question number 22. SART works on which radar? X band. Question number 23. Frequencies at which the SART operates? Answer is 9 gigahertz, comma 3 centimeter, comma X band. So, 9 gigahertz is the frequency. For that frequency, the wavelength is 3 centimeter and these two are in X band. So, this is the choice, this is the answer.
question number 24 batteries fitted in EPIRB, SART, etc. are to be changed when? Answer is battery to be changed as per the expiry date mentioned by the maker. So, you will find in the equipment itself battery expiry date. All the three safety equipments EPIRB, SART and portable VHF they are using lithium primary battery. Lithium primary battery. That you will have to change as per the expiry date given, just before the expiry date. Question number 25 What is the minimum number of channels required for the portable two way VHF for the survival craft? Answer is channel 6, channel 13, and 16. Actually, Channel 16 is the international distress channel which is very much mandatory and channel 6 is the only additional channel normally mandatory. Channel 6 is used for SAR aircraft communication. This channel 13 is used for purely safety of navigation. So, they have included in the choice 6, 13 and 16 and this is the answer. Question number 26. Which channel is designated as a VHF follow on communication channel and is required in all portable survival craft equipment? Answer is 16. Channel 16 is the international radio telephony VHF channel. Question number 27. A ship in distress should transmit the appropriate alarm signal followed by the distress call and message in one or all the international distress frequencies. Which are the frequencies is in accordance with the present recommendation? So, that is the question. So, we have here answer. This is the correct answer. Find the kilo second, comma to 2182 kilohertz and 156 decimal 8 megasecond. So, in these three frequencies, 156 decimal 8 megasecond is the frequency of channel 16. And for MF, 2182 kilohertz is also used now. This is VHF, this is MF. This is also MF 500 kilohertz, but it, it was purely, it is purely meant for Morse code. And uh, that was used before 1992, before the introduction of GMDSS, as when V is to sail as the radio officer. Anyway, that is the answer. Question number 28. Using spoken communication, what is the code word used to indicate a distress message? Mayday. Mayday is the distress signal in radio telephony. So, we say Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. This is followed by the ship's name three times. That is the distress call. Mayday is the answer. Question number 29. Which of this information included in a distress message? The answer is ship's identification. Question number 30. Your vessel has been damaged and taking on water, but you do not require immediate assistance. You would preface a message advising other vessels of situation with answer is pan pan three times. Pan pan is an urgency signal. Whenever you need immediate assistance, that is distress signal made a. If you do not need immediate assistance, but anyway you need assistance, then you can use the urgency signal, pan, pan. You hear, question number 31, you hear on the radio telephone, the word security spoken three times. It indicates 
message about safety of navigation will follow. So the Mayday, Pan Pan, security, all the three are French words. Distress signal, Mayday, urgency signal, Pan Pan, security, security uh, safety. So security, remember, it is purely safety of navigation only, not safety of a person, not safety of a ship, not safety of anything else. It is purely meant for safety of navigation. Use safety message, signal is security. Question number 32. The muster list shows who is the designated GMDS operator. What do the letters GMDS stands for? Okay. The answer is Global Maritime Distress and Safety System. Why they indicate a designated GMDS operator? The reason being, on board a ship, the third officer, second officer, chief officer, master, they are all holding GMDS certificate. But in the master list, they will have to mention a uh, no, officer's name for operating GMDS in case of a emergency. So maybe third officer, second officer name will be there. So GMDS is full form they are asking. The answer is Global Maritime distress and safety system that is all we have 32 questions in this first set then second and third set i will come up with the other questions all other questions soon thank you all the best